Shelly Zimmerman stood by her husband's side for his verdict of an explosive trial, but George Zimmerman was conspicuously absent when she was sentenced to a year's probation and community service punishment for lying to a judge about the couple's finances. And as we learn in an exclusive new interview, the united front of that couple that spoke in code to protect themselves and hide their assets now seems broken. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. Shelly Zimmerman sat silently by as her husband was accused and tried for murder. Today, she is finally speaking out about her husband, George Zimmerman, and their relationship. I can't tell you how many nights I, I have gone or laid awake at night just thinking, I wish to God these circumstances had been different. Those circumstances, Shelley says, began even before the shooting death of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. In an exclusive interview, Shelley says she can't explain what was going through her husband's head the night he got into a fight with Martin because she wasn't home. Um, I was staying at my father's house. We had gotten into an argument the night before and I left. This 26-year-old sat down with Christy O'Connor, an investigative reporter who is writing a book on the trial. Shelley still stands by George's story. Do you think George is capable of having profiled Trayvon and killed him on purpose? No. Why not? That's just not his way. On February 26, 2012, Trayvon Martin was walking back to a house in a gated community in Sanford, Florida, where he and his father were staying. Trayvon caught the attention of the neighborhood watch captain, George Zimmerman, who called police. This guy looks like he's up to no good or he's on drugs or something. A fight broke out. And that's when he grabbed me by the head and tried to slam my head down. Zimmerman fired one gunshot and Martin was killed. Zimmerman claimed he shot Martin in self-defense and was found not guilty of second-degree murder and manslaughter. After the acquittal, his attorney said George is now an outcast. Unfortunately, even though he did nothing wrong but protect his own life that night, the, the way that things were sort of visited upon him by the way the case was handled initially uh, made him a pariah. But Shelley stood by her husband, even as death threats came. There have been so many, um, I mean, scary ones, like if, if George gets acquitted, you're going to find him hanging in a tree. The couple was forced to live on the run. We have been pretty much gypsies for the past year and a half. We lived in a 20-foot trailer in the woods, scared every night that someone was going to find us and that we would be out in the woods alone and that it would be horrific. Shelley says she felt like she was living in a fishbowl. Ripple effects from Martin's death extended far beyond George Zimmerman and the teen. Uh, Trayvon Martin could have been me uh, 35 years ago. Sparking massive protests across the country. Justice! Yeah! And Shelley Zimmerman found herself caught up in those ripples. She admits she lied for George at his bond hearing, hiding how much money they had from a judge. Why did you lie? Fear. Of? Um, many things. Um, there's the fear of just other people knowing how much money we had come into. And that was some a lot of money for us. When George was arrested, internet donations began pouring in. His lawyer said about $200,000 to help pay for his mounting legal expenses. Their reaction to this huge windfall was captured in taped jailhouse calls. And like after that happened yesterday, he said like so many people, just your site kept crashing. But also, perhaps, early signs of a wife's growing ambivalence. After this is all over, you're going to be able to just have a great life. We will. Yeah, we will. Prosecutors say the couple used a code language to try to keep their conversations about their finances from authorities. For example, calling PayPal Peter Pan. Now Ken's going to go from Peter Pan to me. While in jail, Shelley helped keep track of how much money was in George's account. Oh, okay, so total everything. How much are we looking at? Um, like a hundred and... $55. Prosecutors say that's code for $155,000. But only days later, Shelley was pleading poverty. Now, you all have no money, is that correct? To my knowledge, no. Okay. 
knowledge that's correct. Were you under any pressure from anyone, George, Mr. O'Mara, his team, to lie? I'm not going to go into that right now. Wednesday, in the same courthouse where her husband was acquitted, Shelley pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor perjury charge. You know, I can rationalize a lot of, of reasons for, for why I was misleading. Um, but the truth is that I, I knew that I was lying. She's been sentenced to one year probation and 100 hours of community service. I answered to a higher power and I could not um, live with myself if I didn't just completely come clean. We the jury find George Zimmerman not guilty. Yet even though she was there as her husband's verdict was read, George was not in court when she made her plea. Now we're getting a closer look into their relationship, a hint that the couple's marriage may be in trouble. Did you want him to be in court to support you? I always want my husband's support. Since his acquittal in July, George has been off the radar. But just last week, George visited a Florida gun manufacturing plant. It is the same company that made the gun he used to shoot Martin. Do you think it was the right thing to do or sensitive? No. I just think that he's under, um, or he has been kind of living in a pressure cooker. And he is doing or thinking some things that May, none of us can maybe understand right now. It's unclear how much time they're still spending together as a couple. Are you together? I'm not going to answer that. Has this whole experience hurt your relationship? Yes. Do you want to have children? Do you want to stay married? Of course I want to have children and stay married. With George? That's something I'm going to have to think about. Whether it's with George or not, Shelley says she's determined to move forward. I want people to realize um, that I'm a human being who's full of flaws. Part of that process, she says, delivering a message to Trayvon Martin's parents. If I could speak to them, I would say that I'm so deeply sorry for their loss and I can't even begin to understand the grief that a parent experiences when they lose a child. For Nightline, I'm Gio Benitez in New York. Thanks to Gio, we reached out to George Zimmerman through his lawyers and his brother. They declined to comment.